Let's do it. This is the Trade Show's Unhinged Podcast, a podcast from the Facebook group you know you work in trade shows when. This podcast centers on trade shows, live events, and experiential marketing activations in today's world. Your hosts are Todd Nall, who is the owner of Showbox Exhibits and the creator of the Facebook group you know you work in trade shows when, and Mike Morrison, Vice President of Sales for WS Display. The clock is ticking, so let's get busy and get to it, and we'll do just that after this. Need a presenter? Your event audio has you covered. Closed circuit audio equipment with turnkey operation at your trade show booth, live event, or private event. YourEventAudio.com is the place to go. DJ services, MC talent, and a whole lot more. Check out YourEventAudio.com today. Well, September is out of the way, and now we rocky we are rocking rather into October on this October the fourth, twenty twenty four, with trade shows unhinged. I'm Mike Morrison, VP of Sales at WS Display, co-host of the shows you see there on the screen. If you're watching or listening to us, Todd Nall is the owner of Showbox Exhibits in Houston, Texas, and also the uh, co-founder of You Know You Work in Trade Shows Win on Facebook. It's a group there of, golly, that, that group's growing now well over 13,000 plus and people are growing, right? Too many. Too many, <laughs> too many to govern every day. I get a hand. I know. <laughs> yeah, I get a bunch of emails. I'm like, yeah, people want to join, but they're not answering that question. If you want to join that group, you got to answer those questions. And the main one is, you know, are you going to be nice? Right. Right. Just, be nice. Play nice. Be nice. Play nice in the sandbox. You know, most people see that I have a shirt on. It's got my name on it. I usually don't do that every day. Um, I, it's not that I forgot my name. It's basically on Thursdays when I'm in town. This is Thursday before we drop the show on Friday. Uh, I have a, a league that I bowl in. So this is a competitive bowling league shirt that I have on because it's late in the afternoon. As soon as I get done with this, I got to jump in the ride and head over to the lanes and act like I know what I'm doing with the bowling ball. So, uh, I was yeah, there's jealous the, that I don't have a, a shirt with my name on it. I'd be glad to I'll hook you up. I can hook you up with a, of the shirt with your name on it. Hey, man, it's just been one of those weeks. It's uh, We're into fall now, start of third, fourth quarter, rather. Third quarter's over with. And it'll be interesting to see, Todd, the numbers within our industry of how third quarter did. Because usually third quarter, especially rolling into September, we see a big bump in business. And uh, with the trade show live event conference side, uh, everything goes on there. And I know everything I read, you know, I just, as we remember, I spent uh, 11 days out in Vegas on a show uh, as well as some client calls. Everybody I talked with extremely busy. The show was a madhouse uh, in Las Vegas uh, at the convention center. Of course, mine expo was right after that, that tore up the whole city right there in that area of Sahara and, you know, whatever road that, that, that it's on. But uh uh, it, it's good things going on. We'll talk about Vegas in a second. We want to start out, though, with uh, a story that uh, kind of snuck up on us a little bit. I think anytime you hear anything about a strike, especially as big as this one is with the longshoremen on the East Coast all the way down into Texas, down along these ports, uh, that's still – now it's in uh, – this is day before Friday, so it's third day into it, and there's no resolution yet. Uh, this is going to be a problem, especially people on the East Coast, like they didn't have enough problem with uh, what we'll talk about also with Helena in just a minute. But uh, this longshore strike is interesting. It has two facets to it, Todd. You know, they want a 77 percent across the board pay raise for the workers and they want some protection against artificial intelligence. AI, they're con uh, concerned that they're going to lose their jobs to this uh, technology that's coming out that's taking our industry and business by storm. Um, I read today, just before we open the microphones, that, you know, it's kind of leaning in the favor of the strikers. You know, the longer it goes, uh, it appears that the administration is not going to get involved like they could. They could go jump in and say, hey, let's have a cooling off period of, I think it's 80 days or so, that they could just say, okay, y'all get back to the table 
play nice. There's that phrase again and talk about this, you know, act like adults and talk it out, but uh, they're not doing anything. So, and, and this is going to cost billions of dollars a day to people here in the United States. Bad timing. Don't you think? You want, you, you think it's, uh, you think it's planned? <laughs> it's perfect timing actually. Yeah, yeah, it's this is going to be this is going to be tough for those who are expecting these uh, overseas deliveries. Yeah, because uh, right now it's produce, it's you know uh, hard goods, it's but it's a, obviously a huge everything, list. Everything, yeah, everything, right? That's coming yep. from you know that side of the water to this these ports, and um, it's it's huge. You know, we're talking B is in billions, and not just across a month or total, we're talking about per day, per day of impact on our society. That's tar- that's hard to swallow. Yeah, man. Mm-mm-mm. I yeah. tell you what, though, you know what you should do? What's you that? should go buy toilet paper. God, we were just <laughs> having that. Well, just before we open the mics, my wife uh, is a is a avid Sam slash Costco member. She goes to both, right? And she just came back and said, there they go again. They're hoarding the toilet paper. Yeah. And I'm like, what is it about toilet paper? You know, dudes don't think about that. And I remember back in the pandemic, I remember going into stores and, you know, it was the Clorox wipes and anything with disinfectant, right? Because everybody was trying mm-hmm. to clean stuff with. But uh, toilet paper would disappear as well for some reason. Usually it's a storm. Like I said, we'll talk about that one in just a second because there's other flip side of that coin for the East Coast. But uh, uh, toilet paper is being is leaving the shelves. But what I did remember seeing tons of were dude wipes. They were <laughs> everywhere. Nobody was Those buying. Those were them. available. <laughs> oh, and heavy packages, you know, but nice. not not toilet paper. So yeah, you know, because dudes they just rip up blue jeans and they'll. Use whatever. Yeah. No, that's kind of gross. It's kind of <laughs> gross. But anyway, yeah. So this longshoreman thing will be an interesting impact on our economy. Uh, interesting as to what it might do to our industry. Obviously, you got people who are, you know, depending on goods that are coming in. Uh, I'm sure a lot of that is supplies for fixture people or for the trade show side and live events uh, of various types of componentry. And mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see what happens if they don't. Uh, rally around the table and get that done. Yeah, yeah, they better figure something out. It's not good. I tell you, just a quick update here. It is Friday, one day after we recorded about these dock workers and the longshore strike. There is a headline and a change in this. As of Friday, October the 4th, dock workers union will suspend the strike until January 15th to allow time to negotiate a new contract. The union representing 45,000 striking U.S. dock workers at East and Gulf Coast ports reached a deal on Thursday, that was after we recorded, to suspend a three-day strike until January 15th. Now, here's the deal again, and you'll hear this a little bit on the backside of uh, today's show, is uh, basically this is kicking the can down the road. AI is still on the table which is one of their concerns about uh, artificial intelligence and how it will impact their industry and possibly infect and, and impact rather their jobs. So as of right now, there is a, uh, a cancellation to the strike until January the 15th. I tell you who's not having a whole lot of problem, and that's Vegas, of course. Uh, kudos to them. Uh, from IMEX America, the Global Gaming Expo, the Tropicana is about to be demolished, making room for apparently a baseball field that's going to go there. Las Vegas prepares for a a very transformative October, according to the headlines, with major events and new developments. Out with the old and in with the new. A lot of busy shows going on. The Sphere, the Eagles are at the Sphere. That's that's a big ticket right there. You know, I'd love to go to that one. Oh, absolutely. Uh, But Vegas just doesn't uh, miss miss a beat, does it? No, they don't. As a matter of fact, I'm going there tomorrow for the G2E show. So I'll be there every week this this month. So that makes a lot of sense. Wow. You're clocking those miles, man. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, I'm, I'm headed to Kansas City next week for oh, a re- retail show. Uh, it's a conference, uh, Shop Ideation and uh, IRDC, which is uh, 
uh, you know, a big conglomeration of ideas of what's going on retail as a supplier for that. You know, we participate in that. So that'll be interesting. But yeah, it's going to be a busy October, just as it were in September. Before we take a break uh, and talk about some other things, Helena, um, that that was a problem. Uh, a big hurricane that came right up through from Mexico into the Florida area, massive amounts of problems in Georgia, South Georgia, and then moving up the east side of Metro Atlanta into South Carolina and then wreaked serious havoc in North Carolina. I am seeing massive reports about helicopter uh, rescues that are going on there. Um, it could cost that area, the areas of, of demolishing the death tolls well over, I think you said 200 at this point. That's what I heard today. Yeah. And, and climbing because, you know, North Carolina, they're in there with civilian helicopters trying to rescue people. I know you've got a story about that. You can tell in just a second, but well over $160 billion worth of damage there. And it's just like doom and glooms to start the month of October. Right. Yeah. Who, who in North Carolina prepares for a hurricane that comes up through the Gulf? Right. You know, I mean, it just took everybody blindsided everybody. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine, um, he, uh, he just recently got hit, got a, he bought a, a helicopter out of Venezuela and, oh. uh, it, ca it came in in pieces and, uh, he had it refurbed. Um, and he, he just got it, got it just in time and was able to, um, take that up to, up to the Carolinas and, and, and help bring water, help bring formula, help, um, save people. Uh, he saved a baby. Um, it was just, it was just, you know, a, a great time, uh, timing for him to, to get the chopper and then be able to help. His name is Cletus McFarland. Um, he's, he's a pretty famous dude, um, YouTuber. And, um, uh, he, he went up there with his new, it's refurbed MD eight, MD 500, I think it is, um, helicopter. And, uh, yeah, it's just heart, it's heart wrenching. Some of the videos that, uh, that he had posted of the devastation. But uh, yeah, helicopter help is is absolutely and that's is necessary right now because the roads are completely washed out. And that's the thing, you know, I, I did see I don't know if it was this gentleman or not. It was somebody from Florida who was up there with about 20 or 30 other civilian helicopters that literally are just dropping down and trying to find people and get them out. Uh, this one uh, guy posted on TikTok happened to show up on Facebook Reels this morning that um they saved an 11 month old baby uh, who was stuck, who was no, I mean, it was going to die. It was no way to do that. And then there was some older uh, people in the house, one on oxygen and they had one day left of, of air oxygen? supply of oxygen wow. or they would have passed. That's crazy. So, you know, and, and his, his gripe was and legitimate. Where's the administration on this? Where's the military helicopters? Yeah. Where's, you know, it's like two or three, you know, and there's, a I whole think they're just there. now getting in. I think the, the military is just now getting in. What is so, it a week later? Exactly. When did you do yeah. the Randy? Was that Thursday? Last Thursday we were in the Randy. We're talking so, about that one. Go so ahead. it was hitting a week ago. Yes. And we're a week late. We're reacted. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's something that, uh, you know, these these bad circumstances are bad timing in an election cycle, especially in the East, where people remember stuff like this. You know, you've got uh, uh, the, the strikes and you've got, um, you know, that now this hurricane and, you know, what else is going to happen in October? Because this is hurricane season, by the way, as we roll yeah. into October, I mean, November. We're talking about the end of it. We're, we're coming up on the end of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this, this was bound to happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for the most part, I remember in Florida, I talked to a lot of clients and uh, they actually, a lot of them wrote it out. Uh, they were like, no, it wasn't, that wasn't that bad. It was a lot of rain, but not a lot of damage, at least not enough to make them evacuate. Yeah. Uh, but apparently the, the thrust of the eye that did the damage came up through Georgia, like I said, and then to the South Carolina, North Carolina area, then veered off and, and then, you know, left a lot of rain, but, um, just, just bad, bad week, um, for, for that. It's, uh, really kind of sad to, to hear all of this from a trade show perspective. We're busy. Uh, that's good. Um, it just, it's, it's a distraction when you're trying to, and you're, you know, bad things are going to happen just like the, the baseball playoffs for, uh, 
I have to go there because you and I both are sitting in the two cities of of uh, dis, a sports disappointment mm -hmm. for, for baseball. You know, the Braves, they got clocked by San Diego. Your Astros got uh, dealt with. We got dealt with by this Detroit team that, I mean, look, they're a good team. Astros well, look, just didn't have it. And what about this, man? The payroll. I'm sure you saw this. The team payroll is less than one of your ace pitchers makes in a year. For Detroit, did you? Really? Yes, Detroit. I, I've got, I think I'll get my numbers right here. Detroit's okay. entire team payroll is 18 million. What per year? Wow. Hater, Hater, your closer, 20 gets 19. 19. <laughs> 19. Call it 20. I'm sure it was 19 and wow. change. Round up, right? Uh. I mean. Holy crap. You know, now our story is, you know, I joked about it. The Braves were, um, you know, they were a shiny Corvette when they drove it off the lot back in uh, May, you know, uh -huh. and, and going, uh, April, excuse me, uh, April going March, April, spring. May. Yeah, right. spring. We, we were hot. We were ready to go. We were projected to go all the way. And then Strider gets injured. Then Acuna gets injured. And then injury after injury after injury, as we know, and then uh, now we're that Corvette that's blown four out of eight cylinders on the car. Uh, half the tires are half flat. We got egged on the way to the game. Catalytic uh, converters got stolen. Stolen, <laughs> hacked off the <laughs> side mirrors, hanging on with some duct tape. Uh, and now it's time to repair the car and start all over again because we didn't make it either. So, yeah, now it's football, college, and pro. So uh, that's what we get to look forward to in our cities. But uh, yeah, disappointment. The destination of disappointment. That's the phrase uh, that I will use for Atlanta sports because uh, we suck. Anyway, um, we <laughs> has nothing to do with trade shows, but uh, we we um, got a lot to talk about on the backside of this. We're going to take a quick break and come back and wrap things up for this week's trade shows unhinged right after this. Showbox Exhibits, headquartered in Houston, Texas, where they specialize in design, fabrication, and management of your trade show displays. At Showbox, the difference starts with listening. Listening to fully understand the unique brand story that's needed. Then, they create an innovative, compelling concept that reflects specific event objectives. From static trade show displays to fully custom oversized exhibits featuring multimedia graphics, Showbox brings your company's message to the masses. Showbox is a trade show, convention, and environment design agency that is full service from start to finish. They're based in Houston, Texas, but they serve worldwide. They've been creating exhibits for over 20 years. Showbox Exhibits at ShowboxExhibits.com. From light boxes, towers, counters, and back walls to turnkey custom exhibits, WS Display is your partner in providing quality displays at extremely aggressive pricing to fit any reseller's budget. Make more profit by teaming up with WS. With a team of experts to assist with estimates, renderings, and CAD to fulfillment, setup, and test fitting, quality photo proofs, and complete project handling from our East Coast, West Coast, and Pacific Fulfillment facilities. We can be your partner today. Hit me up at mike at wsdisplay.com for more information. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on, as we said on the front end of this show, that's a lot of bad, but there's a lot of good going on. Our industry uh, headlines, I see still, Todd, uh, a lot of M&A going on out there. Mergers and acquisitions, a lot of companies buying out, companies growing, getting bigger. I see a lot of headlines for that. I see a lot of headlines with people moving from one job to the other, not just to jump uh, to a greener grass, but to a bigger pay scale or to a bigger responsibility. Uh, that's happened a lot in 24. I've seen a lot of that uh, moving on up the ladder, and uh, that's a good thing, right? Absolutely. I think so. I think, uh, you know, that's the, the sign of a good of a good strong economy with uh, people making moves. Um, yeah, I, I know we are. I mean, we're, if you know any of any exhibit companies out there that want to be bought, I'm interested in buying. Um, there but you go. you're right. I mean, it's, it's uh, 2025 is looking really good. Yeah, I think so too. I think if we can get by some of the small, you know, the garbage monkey wrenches that get tossed into the game sometimes, uh, but that's life. It's going to happen. We know that's uh 
Uh, you know, it's part of the game. You know, we're making moves and changes here at WS. Um, you're doing it at Showbox and and um, only to try to get better. Yeah, it's 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 uh, the 25. Hopefully, will be the year of uh, differentiation, growth. Uh, hopefully, we'll avoid a recession. That's still the talk of the situation. Interest rates got cut. It, they did get cut a half a percentage uh-huh. point, right? That yeah. helped. That helped. Uh, I just bought a new vehicle, and uh, it was at five point two, and that's with an eight thirty credit rating. So it's not like I broke or something. And then Look I turn you. around. I know. And then I turn around, and they cut the rate. And now my credit union says, "Hey, bring it on over here, big boy." So uh, yeah, it's uh, they could save me a couple of points, uh, not a couple of full points, but a couple of percentage yeah. half, you know, fraction of points. But because uh, mm-hmm. that's what we talk about now, let's close up uh, with this. You know, a lot of things, especially governmental, they fly under the radar. You know, they they got a way of of not being really talked about. One of the things that happened this past week was the potential of a government shutdown. There wasn't a whole lot of press about that. Of course, you had the vice presidential debates that kind of, you know, shaped and formulated, um, you know, the week because everybody was hinging on that. Right. I know we don't. You're not supposed to talk about politics, but uh, I think it's pretty obvious that who won that debate. I would think. Your thoughts on that? Or oh no, that? absolutely. I <clears throat> I think um, I think one guy looked like he didn't know what he was talking about, and the other guy looked completely poised and very well versed in what he wanted to say. And <clears throat> um, they were both they were polite to each other, which was a nice change, right? It was. Uh, but uh, I mean, you can clearly see who knows who's who has the most experience, right? I mean, you've got what ten years versus what two years as a as a governor. Yeah, I think uh, Waltz was completely outmatched. Well, the the one that got me, and I'll have to laugh about this. He goes, "Yeah, sometimes I'm a knucklehead." Oh, who wants a knucklehead for the VP? I I, 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 I just put my hand in. I'm like, what? did he just say that? <laughs> he just said that. I'm like. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes I'm a knucklehead. You know, uh, I, if I would said that when I was dating my wife, uh, I would still be single. I mean, and you it's know, just... I've been to China before and I can tell you when I'm at China. Right. I don't think this guy even knows when he's in China, when he's not in yeah. China. You said you were there in August, and, but you weren't until whenever. Well, I, I just said I was there in the summer. I, well, I, mean, was, yeah, I was there was, at a point. I was there. <laughs> what difference does it make? Uh, it's, it's called truth. But OK, let's get off politics. Uh, but talking about government, the government shutdown almost happened. Uh, and I think we know it is election season. All of these Congress people, everybody was like, we got to go campaign, put a Band-Aid on this, push it down the road, kick the can down the road until December 20th, when we know how our government's going to fare out, who's in charge, who's going to lose their jobs and who's going to get you know hired. And then we'll make a decision then. And uh, Aerosmith said it best, my friend. It's the same old song and dance. Right on, right on. I tell you what, and it's it's been uh, it's been a month, and I think we're going to go another three months of really not even having an administration at this point. No one's running the country. Nope. <laughs> that's it. I mean, you, you got, and not jokingly, but you got Hamas and Israel. Oh, they're ready. They're ready free to go. For all. Free for all in the world right yeah. now. Everybody's doing whatever it's, they want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And you got a couple of months to figure that out, and then mm-hmm. at the end of that, uh, it's gonna you know less than a month really. It's right out a month. Uh, yeah. It's the fifth, and and this is the fourth. So you got just about thirty something days. days. And, yeah, and it's gonna be a a, a, a decision. I'm gonna uh, be watching the uh, the results at SEMA in in Vegas. So I'm gonna be out there watching. Are you gonna be making bets? I know, right? <laughs> See, that's you're gonna come back with some cash. Bet. Ooh, that's a that's a big bet. I just yanked the earphones out of my ear. That was such a big statement. <laughs> Let me wrap up with this. <laughs> that was kind of strange. Um, the Randy Smith Memorial Golf Class. We promoted it a couple times on the show. We pre- I appreciate you allowing me to do that. We did have that tournament on Thursday. It was a rain or shine event, and the hurricane did play havoc with us. We did get it in. Uh, we reluctantly got out there and played in driving rain. Um, it is mm. the most miserable weather to play in because you play 13, 14 holes out of 18. By the time you're soaking wet down to your wallet, my wallet was ruined, by the way. Uh, I had checks. In Fortunately, that there's no money in it. There, yeah, none. Uh, truth hurts <laughs> sometimes. But my, my credit cards, debit cards were. It's amazing. Here's the point. Did you know that if your debit card, in the chip 
that's in your card, if it gets soaking wet, it's still good and it still works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did not know moving that. parts. I know, but I just figured it gets soaked. It would just not like stick it in there, and they would go declined, declined. <laughs> no, no, it has nothing to do with chill. <laughs> <laughs> the truth hurts, right? <laughs> truth hurts, sir. Sir, you need to follow uh, us. I don't care how broke you are; as wet, it can be as wet as you want, it's, but it's still not going to work. I mean, it's <laughs> like the old Nintendo games, right? If we blow Let me on. blow on. <laughs> Blow on and stick it in. That's how old we are. We know what uh -huh. that reference is. Um, so nonetheless, we got it in. We raised a lot of money uh, for people, Good. 22 recipients this year. It was a record of number of people that had setbacks. And we appreciate everybody. If you go to social media, you'll see the videos that we did of the award ceremony and recipients and, and, and everything we did there of the 30th annual that we did this year. So now it's on to 31. And uh, a lot of things coming up, uh, God, it, but it's going to be interesting with all of this uh, longshore strike, the supply chain being messed up now, and uh, an election. It's it's going to be fun times for the rest of the year, right? It's exciting. Exciting. That's the, exactly. Exciting. That's the word I was thinking of. Anything uh, you'd like to add before we wrap this up? You know, just be kind to, to each other, right? Let's just be kind. I don't care who wins. We're still America after, after this election as we were before. So don't take it personally. Everybody takes it personally. I wish, you know, I wish uh, we'd go back to boring politics, but unfortunately we're not there. No, every, every cycle, it tends to get worse and worse. So uh, we'll see where this fares out. But, uh, you heard it first here on Trade Shows Unhinged. <laughs>